Thrilled to have back here on the Rich Eisen Show, um, getting ready for season four of Big Mouth, available for streaming on Netflix. Uh, it's released last week, as a matter of fact. The co-creator and executive producer and voice actor for many different roles in this very funny series, Big Mouth. Welcome Nick Kroll back to the show. How you been, Nick? Good, Rich. How you doing? I am doing fine. We've been talking quite a bit about fantasy football. Are you still in one of those or not? Because you're the, I'm not. Uh, you I, out, I, huh? When when the league ended, I think I it, it slipped away, and then every year I kind of wait for someone to invite me to join. Oh thinking, my god! Uh, I, you know, thinking I'm I would be like oh, and, but it's always like it's only strangers on Twitter, hmm. Um, hmm. and so I haven't I haven't joined. Um, so no. So um, would you would you like to do one next year? I mean, we'll invite you to one. We could do that. Well, Rich. You know, I I appreciate the invite, and I will now. I'm going to play hard to get and have to consider mm. it. <laughs> but I feel, yeah, I feel like, and I feel like you're in you're in in at least one league with some some folks I know. I feel like I, there's a uh, at least that you were as of a couple years. No, ago. I'm still in I'm still in a league uh, with a bunch of poker buddies who I definitely want to beat the pants off of. Uh, we may know some similar people right there. Um, and and I, we were just talking earlier about how I want to win so badly that yeah. when I'm losing, I have to sit down and actually take stock in real life stuff like my children, my marriage, <laughs> and just realize like, you know, you know what I mean? I'm healthy. Thank God. You know, like I, I it's not it's. It's not mentally. It's not sane. Is basically what I'm saying. Does it help? But is it a? Is it this year, especially with all the insanity going on, is it a helpful distraction inside of it? Oh my gosh! Yes, it is. No doubt about it. And I, I still want to win. And it's it. But it hasn't balanced out the uh, want to in terms of being a sane individual. Like yeah, I. It did. It does so, not balance out the desire to annihilate your close friends. Right. But you you know all about this because you were in a series literally about this sort of um, passion and insanity for all those years, Nick. You know what I mean? That's what it, basically the league was all about. Correct? Um, y- yes. That 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 is... Um that is what it truly was all about. And it was, it was while we were doing it, it was super fun to have... Um, to have that kind of combination of, of working with these people who then we were literally in the league together and we would build end up building stories around it. Like I was a, I was definitely the, the term tinker stinker, uh, stinker tinker was, was definitely me. It was the like Sunday morning, you know, nine forty five before the first kickoff, slightly hung over on the toilet, making some rash last minute decisions. <laughs> That's the um, best kind though, Dave. Yeah, uh, you know, like uh, it, totally a total combination of the two. Tinker, um, stinker, uh, tinker, stinker. Yeah, those. Less, and then also, I was a drunk tinker. I was definitely like a late night in bed, oftentimes like Saturday night, like a little drunk, and then just making some some wild uh, <laughs> trades and last minute substitutions. And then the next morning, I think, yeah, like would then be paying for both of those things on the toilet right before kickoff. <laughs> it all comes back to the toilet, doesn't it, Nick? When it calls, it really right does. Back, it you know? really does. Uh, always, if you're if you're feeling if you're feeling regular, then you're feeling then you're feeling good. <laughs> it helps clear your mind, make sane decisions. You know, who is the best uh, football playing actor or? Which who, you know that you had there's a couple there. that stand out. Um, I mean, the first one, the my first one was Antonio Gates. I was in a in a hot tub with Antonio Gates, season one, okay. and I, we we sh- I was in a hot tub with him for like five hours, mm-hmm. and I was losing my mind and said some things to him that I don't remember and still regret. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Terrell Suggs, very funny dude. He says, um, "Okay, he's a genuinely funny guy." Um, uh, JJ Watt came in. I rem- this is what I realized. Like this is, and I, I'm sure you've dealt with this too. Is like yes. the guys who are stars in the league who then can transition into being broadcasters. Mm-hmm. It's there. You have to be an incredibly smart. Like I know people. I could be wrong, but I think a lot of people think the athletes are just pure athletic machines. But to be the best at your sport, let's say like a JJ Watt to excel for the number of years, or Terrell Suggs. You have to your your mind. You have to be so fast and so quickly adaptable, and be able to learn and evolve very quickly. 
And I think he, like, I watched JJ at the beginning of the week shoot one scene, and then it was the week of the ESPYs, and he probably shot, like, two commercials the next couple days and an ESPY sketch, and then came back on a Friday. And by Friday, he was a markedly better actor. No kidding. And I, yeah, and I think it's, he's so, a guy like that, you know, it's like if you're if you're the quarterback of your defense, or you're you know you're you're you are learning, picking up things, and adapting incredibly fast. And I think some of the, for sure, some of the guys who came on were able to do that. Um, and uh, you know, Ocho Cinco had four cell phones on set when we were in Vegas. Um, uh, let's see, um, I had. Yeah, th- those are those are definitely some of the some of the highlights. But it was a bl- it was always a blast. Um, I loved uh, I always loved um, having um, uh, I always loved having uh, uh, shoot. It was just always fun, no matter who they were. Josh Cribbs was fun. Yeah, I think um, didn't Marshawn do one? Did he do Marshawn one? Marshawn did a few. Marshawn came in in the last minute and did it. Um, it was amazing. Um, uh, really special, very funny guy. Showed up late and pranked the whole team. Um, uh, uh, he he was uh, he was just very funny and like sh- pretended like he wasn't going to come and then showed up uh, like showed up didn't even tell his agent and then showed up on set. Um, and then let's roll. And then let's roll. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Nick Kroll here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, okay, and Big Mouth is uh, is back, and um, and you've got so many funny people doing this, man. So this season you've got uh, Zach Galifianakis and Seth Rogen and John Oliver. How do you reach – Paul Giamatti, how do you reach out to these people and say, this is what I got in mind for you, and then um, and then this is, you then lay out what you actually have in mind for them, Nick? Well, uh, you, you know, in, in, in order of – Appearance. John Oliver was early in the season. He plays a British. We the first three episodes take place at camp, mm. and um, we always had British counselors for some reason. Like I remember summer too. camps in the Northeast always had weird British counselors. Yes, with high That's... black socks and sandals and short yes. shorts. Yes, um, yes, including yeah. my now brother-in-law Roger Bennett, uh, who's a is a Get host out. of Men in Blazers podcast yes. and TV show. Um, just a little, just doing a little sports podcast, uh, show yes. energy shout out to Roger Bennett and, uh, Michael Davies of, of the men and blazers, uh, men and blazers crew. Yes. Um, but they, uh, th- those counselors were always around and we, John is a, uh, a friend. I, I call him a friend. I don't know if he'd call me a friend, but <laughs> we reached out to him. He was down to pop in and do it. Um, Paul Giamatti voices a speaking of toilet time. Uh, one of the storylines is that Andrew goes to camp and he doesn't like to poop anywhere but at home. Yes. And he basically spends the entire summer holding it in. Uh, <laughs> or he loses the thread, a little bit of a turtle head, you know, like a turtle head situation where sure. it pops out and then sure. retreats and doesn't want to go back. And mm-hmm. so Paul voices his impacted poop, um, his angry impacted poop for the year. Um and I think we reached out to him directly, or no, I didn't reach out to him. We went through regular casting, right. and I think it turned out his his son was a fan, and so okay. he was like, "All right, I'll play an impacted poop on your show." <laughs> uh, and yeah, um, he's amazing. I mean, it's per- it's he couldn't be more perfect for the role. And then Seth Rogen has been a friend for a long time and a fan of the show, and he plays my best friend at camp, and he was also a kind of a a, a camp kid, so he really understood that. Um, he plays Seth Goldberg on the show. Okay, his course. best friend from childhood and writing partner is Evan Goldberg. My best friend and writing partner on Big Mouth is Andrew Goldberg. So we we thought there was some fun stuff to make him uh, Seth Goldberg, um, and he definitely showed his balls to kids at camp, which he, did, <laughs> he does on on the show. Um, and then yeah, Zach Galifianakis plays. In fact, getting back to the the beginning of our conversation. Yes. He plays the gratitude, um, you know, because the the season of Big Mouth deals with anxiety, which I think people yes. are dealing with right now more than ever. And kids are obviously dealing with it a tremendous amount. And, you know, we talked to psychologists, therapists about how do you deal with anxiety? And, and the thing that came back repeatedly and really with one specific therapist that we talked to was he, he talked about, you know, take breathing, really working your breathing and also gratitude. 
And so when I heard gratitude, I was like, oh, what if there was a gratitude? And um, and then we reached out to Zach, uh, who has this really wonderful kind of funny voice for gratitude as like a kind of a fun, almost like Margaritaville-esque <laughs> gratitude. You know, this toad who's like all about gratitude. Um, as a means to help kids deal with their anxiety and as a means for you to deal with your anxiety sure. as you, as you losing your fantasy football. Yes. And your I do need a gratitude. Mad, you know, you're right. You're right, you Nick. And so you just, you just, um, dropped a lot there and I just wanted to, I guess kind of want to go one by one on a few things here. Sure. Uh, first of all, I, I went to a uh, summer camp, Camp Loconda, Trails End Camp, both sure. in, uh, uh, New York and Pennsylvania respectively. And they did have tons of British counselors, tons mm -hmm. who all taught us best they could about uh, soccer, playing soccer. And oh. I always remember, and I made this always my 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 call of soccer highlights on Sports Center. Whenever somebody just missed the goal, I would use the phrase that all the counselors used with me, which was "unlucky." That's, yeah. That, <laughs> totally. That, that's the word they they would they would call you un unlucky. And yeah. I, <laughs> and I brought that to Sports Center because that was straight from my summer camp experience. You know, yeah. they they were they they're the high I black mean, so socks. Much of my yeah. my concept of Britishisms of, <laughs> comes from those counselors, and I, I now have a vi vivid memory of of going like wide right and hearing unlucky, unlucky, hard luck. Yeah. That's what they would tell me, hard luck. And I'd never heard those phrases before, being from Staten Island, New York. And then, so your your brothers in law, your brother in law with the great Roger Bennett, he's a he's a stellar human being. That guy, he, I love he him. He is. He's yeah. He and I have obviously he married my sister okay. Vanessa, and we did a book together years and years ago called Bar Mitzvah Disco about <laughs> his Bar Mitzvah pictures and stories from the seventies to nineties, and <laughs> and he's gone on to you know to to. Uh, host men and blazers and yes. and just become he's a sports fan i think he's he's done a ton to I introduce premier league soccer and and oh, to no american question. audiences and figure out a way to really connect yeah. uh you know pop culture and sports in a way and, and honestly in a way that you yourself blaze the trail i think in 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 a way that that now has become more more common but it, you know he's really dives in he's a great writer he's written a lot of books and and uh and and men and blazers if you're interested in soccer if you don't really care about soccer but you want to understand it more i, I highly recommend oh, men and great. Blazers. him and davies are, are phenomenal and i do have yeah. I, it's just it's not geographically sound for me to get all the way up to where we keep our mugs i do have a bill life mug that he gave me um <laughs> because Amazing. i'm i you know i i'm i'm i feel like i'm i'm worthy of that mug uh based yeah. on many different things uh, and I then, think you are. Thank you, Nick. And then, and then, last one. Um, look, I, I've I've been fortunate to ask friends uh, who are um, very talented and, and and very you know um, well known friends do stuff for me on this show. Like, hey, would you mind reading it this way or doing it that way? And and then they send it to you, and it's not that you know, like you 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 have to send it back to them and say, would you mind doing it another way? We we've done <laughs> bits and constructs like that. So uh -huh. when you ask Paul Giamatti to play an impacted poop, do you mm -hmm. just accept his first reading or do you actually give somebody that decorated notes, Nick? Uh, How does there, that work? There, there are there are not – the beauty of Paul Giamatti is yes. that there's not the need for many notes. He, he really <laughs> – he could really – he was able to very quickly find Capture. the character okay. of an impacted, angry poop. Um, <laughs> he – in fact, on my Instagram, there's a video. Um, if there's a somewhere on my Instagram, there's a picture of of Giamatti, and then a video of him. You know, I think we recorded him. He was in New York. We were in LA, <laughs> and Mark Levin, one of my co-creators, took a video of him speaking straight to camera about Nick, uh, the character. But I, I like to think Paul is actually speaking it directly to me. But you can see the performance, <laughs> and it's it's pretty it's uh it's pretty special um it's and uh, is this live are we live right we now? are yeah we are okay. we are but i appreciate you 
giving me that heads um, up. But if you, yeah, is there a way you can? I'm, I'm like, oh, I could, I could play something. I could play it for you directly, but I feel like that might be <laughs> no, that would be dicey, slightly dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to, you know, we'll just have to see it on on your show. Yes, it says if Big you go man. to my Instagram, it's Andrew's poop is Paul Giamatti, <laughs> and you can see it. The the poop looks a little like Paul Giamatti. Um, and, and, it's, and you can see Paul and he's got a fully shaved head and it's, it's pretty special. It's, and if you're angry with me, if we ever end up in the same fantasy football league, sure. Rich and you, yes, you, you get frustrated with me. You can go and, uh, hear Paul Giamatti speak to my selfishness and, and, and it and it and it might bring you some solace. I look forward to that, Nick. And we will. I, I will definitely uh, remember that I've invited you to something that you have months to back out of. Um, year, you know, next year. Uh, I before before it. I let you go, uh, for my own children, I need to ask. Sing two is that coming? Do we get that? Do we Sing get more two Gunther? Is coming. It's uh, you know, COVID has thrown everything sort of for a loop, but right. it is coming. I've done a lot of recordings for it, mm-hmm. and it's. Uh, it's great. And I think I did a recording for you of Gunter, yes. and I don't think I had, you did not give me any notes on it, but maybe N- now no, I did more comfortable. No, again, um, you, you captured that, but um, if I asked you to record something to my children in the voice of the douche, um, I would have given <laughs> you notes for sure from Sausage Party. I will hold off on that. But oh, if, okay. if and when you need, if your kids are ever you know need, need to make a bm i can talk to paul giamatti <laughs> about voicing an impacted poop for them you know just let uh, me know oh man i think i told you the last time you were here my my kids as we were driving around town looked and saw the 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 posters for sausage party and billboards are like dad can we see that i'm like nope <laughs> no you may not <laughs> not not yet no, you may not. Uh, Let's when see. they do, but when they do, it's a glory. By, by the time the COVID quarantine is over, oh my God, <laughs> you'll be like, you know what, go ahead. Why not? Watch it. What, what the are, hell? What, what, what are we going to do at this point? We've watched everything else on every <laughs> every streaming network at this point. So. Nick, this was great, man. Thanks for the time. Um, let's do this more often. I and mean, you be well, you be healthy and safe. You're, and congrats on your show being already renewed for seasons five and six. You can catch Big Mouth on Netflix. Thanks for the call, sir. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate right it. Right back at you. That's Nick Kroll. Oh, that's so damn funny. (laughs) Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.